Microsoft's shipping its smaller, cheaper Surface Go tablet today. Here are the three best things about it. It's hard to believe that Microsoft's on its ninth generation of Surface tablets, and historically they've gone bigger, better, faster. This time around, they've aimed for something a little bit more mainstream. This is the Surface Go, a 10-inch tablet, and the three things that I like most about it may not seem especially revelatory, only because Microsoft's really changed its basic approach here. The first thing I'd like to talk about, though, is the price, and this is what everyone's going to be focusing upon first. The Surface Go is uh, a tablet that costs $399 for four gigabytes of memory and 64 gigabytes of storage. There's also a more powerful option, eight gigabytes of memory and 128 gigabytes of storage for $549. There's a few adders as well. I'm gonna argue that you don't actually need this, the Microsoft Type Cover, which costs an additional $99. And there is the traditional Microsoft Surface Pen, which is also $99, plus this the new Microsoft Surface Mobile Mouse, which is actually rather cheap at $39. Now, historically, Microsoft's gone in the direction, like I said, of bigger, faster, more powerful. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 2017. Inside here is Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of SSD storage. But for all this, you're paying $1,800. So you can see why well, Microsoft chose this approach. Now, obviously, this is a little bit smaller than that uh, Surface Pro 2017 as well. And let's talk a little bit about the second thing that I like about it, which is the size. With the Surface Pro 2017 and other tablets of its sort, um, you couldn't necessarily put them on an airplane train table. I came here on Amtrak and was able to work on a train uh, table that folded out from the seat in front of it quite comfortably, no problems at all. I would also say, though, as I as argued earlier, that you don't even necessarily need the type cover that goes along with it. What Microsoft does, and has always done, is the fact that it allows you to go ahead and use this as a tablet. But you can see that now, when you get into the 10-inch form factor, somebody with average size hands like myself can kind of hold it more comfortably like here, or you can even hold it more like a traditionally fo traditional phone. When you're typing, there's a keyboard that pops out, a software keyboard that pops out from the bottom, or you can go ahead and use a pen as well. The other thing you can do is actually order Cortana to bring up a website like PCWorld.com or a Netflix uh, uh, show or a Spotify playlist. Again, you could do these with previous iterations of the Surface Pro, but it feels a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more natural here. I think the final thing that, you, that I want to talk about, though, is the performance. Now. Historically, again, Microsoft's aimed more at the high end of the Core series, Core i5, Core i7. Um, there's been a couple of Core M3 parts as well, but for this, this actually has a Pentium chip inside of it. Pentium can go ARM, it can go in two directions, with an Atom processor inside of it or with the low end of a Core chip. This is the low end of the Kaby Lake processor family. And what's interesting about this particular processor is that the numbers say it's rather slow. Um, our benchmarks show that from a performance standpoint, it actually is in the uh, neighborhood of the I Apple iPad, um, a Chromebook Flip, um, and the ASUS Novigo, which uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip inside of it. My experience, though, has been sort of contradictory to that. Um, this feels if not fast, then relatively responsive and quick. And part of that has to do with the fact that I think that with this, Microsoft Edge, which is the default browser, feels quick and responsive. I have other machines, much more powerful machines, where it's not the case. It feels choppy. I'm not sure if it's an optimized build or something that Microsoft's done here, but um, it does feel actually a lot quicker than, in, than other machines. The other thing to talk about here, though, is the fact that it uses Windows 10S. And the default Windows 10S makes Edge the default browser. Now, some people see Windows 10S or Windows 10 in S mode, as we're calling it now, and they run away in fear just because Microsoft's Windows 10S doesn't allow you anything else but the Microsoft App Store. There's no Chrome browser available, no Opera. There's nothing that's not in the store, and that leads to a lack of flexibility and choice that turns some people off. But Microsoft says that what it gives you is optimized and streamlined for performance, and it's kind of hard to argue with that. So price, size, and performance, those are the three best things that I like about the Surface Go. That really paints this issue in some broad strokes. For the nuance, for the details, please see my review on PCWorld.com.
Thank you.